Super Espresso is an astounding application that allows you to view, build, interact with applications on any device, any platform, anytime, anywhere. We have the ability to do non-IT customization. If you want to customize a grid, you can add and remove fields. You can change the way charts work. We have this notion of offline access. We've brought our own spin on Bring Your Own Device, where we've catered for quite a bit of the pains that administrators have today. We have this unique development platform that will allow you to build applications and deploy them to Cisco Espresso. Or we have an app store where people can develop applications for the community and customers and or resellers can simply download them from the app store. We don't care what device you want. We don't care what platform you want. All we want to do is surface the information and help you do your job better, easier on a mobile device or a mobile platform. So before we get into Espresso, let's have a little, small little talk about enterprise mobile infrastructure as a whole. Because most of you might think, oh, it's just a mobile application. I want to be able to query a customer. I might just want to be able to query some stock code information, post a sales order on this mobile device. But it's actually a lot bigger than that. We didn't just think about our customers accessing that. We thought about the other users in the organization that might want to use this. So we have enterprise customers, we have SMBs, we have consumers, and the marketing people came up with this very nice word called prosumers. So what that would be is our customers' customers. So your customers, you could give them access to Cispro Espresso, so they could place an order on you without the duplication of work. They could see the status of their order. Your suppliers could see the current stock level and maybe be more proactive in actually keeping the stock levels up or down. So Espresso is not just for our customers. It can be for our customers' customers as well. We looked at applications. The applications needed to have value-added services, right? What I mean by that is we must be able to take this application from a typical user uh, that's using Salesforce automation, is on the road all the time. We must be able to take Espresso from, from, from a Salesforce automation point of view and put them in the warehouse where they can use scanning capabilities. We want to be able to give them productivity tools so that they do one task once, or they do the task when they're online or whether they're offline. And we want to be able, we wanted to give them the ability to make top-level decisions uh, from a bird's eye overview. So take BI information, uh, put it in a chart. Uh, CEOs and CFOs want to get the latest bank balances. What are the sales figures for the day? We can simply use Espresso to expose that information through to them. Connectivity plays a massive role on a mobile device because you're not connected to the internet all the time, right? You usually have some 3G connection, some Wi-Fi connection, or usually you don't have any connection at all. Espresso needed to cater for, or a mobile device, needed, or a mobile application needed to cater for all of this. The single biggest thing that administrators worry about is security. Security is pretty much one of the biggest things that I think administrators cringe about, opening up the data to the world. Because if you're on your mobile device, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have to open up that database or, or the infrastructure to the world. And we'll show you how we do that. Middleware we're not too concerned about right now, but uh, enterprise infrastructure and applications and, and deploying the applications to the enterprise, that's what we cover. So how, how have we done this? Well, we support all of the types of end users. We, sort all, we pretty much have a, a vast amount of applications, and I'll take you through a demonstration. Devices. We're not prescriptive on your devices. As we look around the room, pretty much everybody's either got a BlackBerry or an iPhone or a Windows phone or a, uh, an Android device. They might have a, a Note, a Samsung Note, or they might have a 10.1 Galaxy Tab, or they might have a mini tablet. Or they might just have a, de a, a normal laptop running uh, Internet Explorer. So Espresso will run on any one of these devices and will run on these devices natively. As soon as you purchased an app from the App Store, well, that's what you got. So, for example, if you were, had an app that did sales orders and you needed to add six other fields onto the screen or remove ten fields, well, guess that's impossible, right? Because whoever built the application built it in mind of those ten fields are on the screen. So on a current mobile application, there's no customization. What you see is what you got. And if you needed any customization done, well, you have to ring up the developer and get him to build it for you. There was also no third-party integration. So let's say you built a customer query application and you had a separate CRM system, but you wanted to pull that data into your mobile application. Well, guess what? 
phone call to the developer. A few thousand dollars later, you'll be able to have this application built for you. In Espresso's very DNA from the very core infrastructure, we've built in this notion of customization, 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 where you can actually tailor the application to your needs. So if you don't use multiple bins, you can simply take it off without having any developer skills. So we have this notion of non-IT customization. We've introduced the App Store a year, ago, a year ago. And what that allows us to do is we now have a community, a community of people who build applications and put them up on the App Store. So let's say you need quite a slick warehouse management tool or a CRM tool. It's available on the App Store. You can simply purchase it from there and it will just simply download it and install it straight into Espresso. So you can start using the community to, to, to run your business in terms of applications. And lastly, we talk about security. There's this bring your own device phenomenon that's hit the world. And that's the bit the administrator saying, yeah. You know, people are clumsy with their devices. They lose their phones. They drop it in. What happens to the data on the device? How can I restrict this user from getting more information? He's now a mobile user. I've set up all these thousands of securities and permissions inside SysPro. I want those security and permissions to filter down to the mobile platform. I haven't given him access to the branch. It must filter down to the, to the Espresso application as well. He's not allowed to see the unit cost. All of that information needs to float down. Also, from an administration point of view, let's say today I work for the sales team, so I belong to the sales role. So my entire menu in, in Espresso has all sales tiles or sales applications. And two weeks later, I then move in, I become a buyer, for example. Well, an administrator can push from, from the SysPro screen, can actually push information to your device. So by simply changing his role, we can change the menu on your Espresso menu without the user even knowing. So as soon as he logs on to his device for the very first time or the next time, we can change everything on his device from our central configuration panel inside Espresso. From Cispro Espresso's very inception, the simple thing that we had in mind is simplicity. We didn't want to have a notion where somebody had to read a manual. So in its very DNA, Cisco Espresso, we try to make it as simple as possible. We've built Espresso from the beginning for touch first. It does work with the mouse, but we've built it for touch first and mouse later. We have this notion of inherited permissions. So if a particular user is not allowed access to warehouse FG or branch 10, well, on the mobile device, he will have no access to that. So the Security you set up in, in SysPro will automatically propagate itself or inherit itself to your mobile device. That includes field access, companies, branches, uh, etc. We also support all devices, all platforms. So you can be running on a phone, a tablet, a desktop. We'll even run on Oprah on a Mac. Okay, so we're not prescriptive of where you should run Espresso on. We sort of looked at our competitors and, and, and saw what they did. And this is the, the, the example on the left-hand side is of a company that has multiple applications to do various different things. So if they had a sales order application, they'd have a sales order button. So you'd have to log on into the sales order application. If they're doing CRM, well, you'd have to log into the CRM one and then so forth and so forth. So if you had 10 different tasks, you had 10 different icons on your main screen. What we've done is we have one icon. It's called Cispro Espresso. And when you log in for the first time, you'll be presented with a menu. This menu is completely customizable. The key to our fame in Cispro Espresso is our customization. In, in all other applications, pretty much what you purchase off the App Store is what you get. So if you don't like the branch field or would like to add a salesperson field to your screen, well, it's pretty much impossible without somebody actually writing some code for you. In Cispro Espresso's very DNA, we built in the notion of customization. So you as an end user without any development skills will be able to go onto your device and tailor the application to your needs. This menu is completely customizable. 
right? It has something called active tiles. So just like Phil showed you in CISPRO, you could draw charts on there, you could get RSS feeds, you could show your, your latest stock prices. Everything can be put on those tiles. These tiles represent an application or a piece of functionality, like a customer query or a sales order posting or even a stock take. These tiles can be completely customized. So this menu can be customized by system, company, operator, role, or by device. So what happens here is, is Kevin can log onto his iPhone and get one view of life. But when he logs onto his iPad, because he's got a bigger real estate, he can get another view of life. And when he's on his desktop, because he's got 21-inch monitor, you can get a different view of life. So the, the, the application automatically detects what device you're coming from and sends down the appropriate menu. So that's why I say it can be customized by operator, role, by device. The information on the actual tiles, like I mentioned before, they can be pushed to the device. So let's say there's a new sales application that I want to deploy to all the salespeople. They don't have to come into the organization. I, ins I as the Cispro administrator, can go into an application inside Espresso on the, on the Cispro menu and say, I'd like to add this application to this particular user's phone. And the next time he logs in, that application will simply make its way onto their device. So that, for example, is a search, which is completely customizable. That's a display form. I'll take you through a demonstration of that. We also support grids. So if you go into a customer query, you'll be able to see their invoices. And you'll be able to sort and add fields and remove fields on your mobile device. We also allow you to add and remove fields from the form. Right? So this is a bit the customization piece that I told you about. And again, you can customize the screens by operator, system, company, role by device. So again, if you go into an inventory query screen and you've got 10 fields on your phone, but on your tablet, you can fit 20, 20 fields on there. The, the system will automatically detect that and bring you down the, the right content. Again, most important thing, there's no IT customization. Right? So you don't have to be a developer to do this. You literally go on your phone, put it in design mode, and customize it. What we've done there is we've built specific bits of business logic. So let's say we're sitting in the sales order query screen inside SysPro, and you right-click on the customer and you say, I'd like to see his invoices. You can simply right-click, associated pane, show me invoices. And inside your sales order screen, you'll be able to see the customer's invoices. So we've taken a lesson from that, and that's how we built Espresso. We've built specific components. So Espresso is made up of discrete pieces of reusable components. We've built a customer header. We've built customer invoices. We've built inventory headers. We've built supplier invoices. And what we do in the background is we start off with a blank application called customers. And then what we do is we simply drag on a customer header, customer invoice, and customer aging components. And now we have a customer query application that looks something like that. Similarly, we can take a sales order entry application where we have the sales order header, the sales order lines, and the totals. But because we have a customer component, or sorry, a customer code in the sales order header, I can automatically pull in the customer header component. Right? So you can miss and match components within an application. And it will make sense once you see the demonstration. So now you can have a sales order application with customer header or customer invoice information on it. We also have a set of generic components. Espresso can expose custom form fields. So if you have 10 custom form fields against customers, we can expose that to you in Espresso as well. We have multimedia. So let's say you're on site and you need to take a picture of a stock code or a customer or a supplier. You can take that picture and we'll upload it directly to the Cispro application server. We have a signature pair for delivery note, perhaps. So you're delivering something to the customer. Your delivery guy's got an iPad. You can sign on there that I've received it. Clicks on the delivered button. It takes that particular customer signature, uploads it up to the sales order. Right. And we have reporting as well. So reporting will form a, it will be a first class citizen of Cispro Espresso. You are able to run pretty much any report from within Espresso. Business decisions have been made a lot simpler now. Because what we do is not just return static information to your device, but we also have a complete rich charting engine. The charting engine not only allows us 
to view information, live information, and it doesn't send back an image, it actually sends back the real data, and the graphs and charts are, are generated on the fly on these devices, using the native capability of these devices, which allows us to do quite clever things. So you can actually have some really slick looking charts. Our charts are interactive, as I'll explain to you, as I'll show you later in a minute or so. We can do drill downs. Uh, we can switch the charts from bar charts to pie charts to radar charts, donut charts, completely up to you. Push notifications are built up of three different areas. So it could be an end user, your Salesforce automation. So I'd like to insist for a call up a screen and say, Dear John, please go and visit customer number 63 while you're on the road. And basically what we'll do is, if John's got three devices, we will send a push notification to all three devices, and he'll automatically get this little bubble on his Cispro application, if you can see that, and at the top notifying him that he's got a new activity to do. On top of that, push notifications can also be automated. So if your bank balance goes below a certain amount, the system can automatically wake up and say, oh, Mr. CEO or Mr. CFO, your bank balance has reached a, a specific threshold. Or the sales guys, you could say, you've reached a target this week. The system will automatically do that for you as well. Not automatically, you obviously have to build it inside electronic signatures or inside the trigger programs, but basically we can send uh, push, notica push notifications from within inside this pro. The last piece is workflow. So let's say somebody raises a requisition, and I don't go into SysPro, but I, get, I need to get some sort of notification in Espresso that this requisition has three lines. I'll get a push notification to my device. I can tap on it, see the lines that was on that requisition, and I can approve or reject it, which will actually integrate directly into SysPro workflow services. But on top of that, if you've missed that particular push notification, there's an inbox. So all your tasks for today will actually go into an inbox and you can address them as and when you need to. The push servers are all part of the Cisco Espresso platform. So what it is, it's a Windows service that actually sits on your application server. It doesn't have to be on your Cisco application server, it just needs to be on a, on a server. And inside this service, we've built three push services. We've bu built a service to push to Android, to Apple, and to Windows. And basically what, what happens here is that when you send a push notification, I'll show you a quick demonstration, it actually doesn't go straight to the device. I have to physically send it to Apple or to Microsoft or to Google, and they will basically send it to your device. Okay, so we've done all of that work for you. All you have to do is install it, and we'll sort all of that out for you automatically. cache parts of the database on your device. And when you're in an area of no internet connectivity, the Cisco Espresso application will actually pull that information from the device's local cache. If you needed to capture transactions against this particular customer, supplier, or inventory item, well, you can go ahead and capture that information. If you don't have any internet connectivity, all that will happen is the system will simply add it to the system's cache. What it will then do is, when you're online again, is it will go through three processes. It will take each of those applications or each of those transactions, it will send it through a validate phase. It will then allow you to review that particular transaction, and only once you're happy with that transaction will it then post it to the Cisco application server. Every single application allows you to work off cache data, and then using the sync manager built into Cisco Espresso, we allow you to sync those transactions back to the Cisco applications. So if you're sitting at the contact details screen and you click on the particular user's email address, for example, it will then take you to the device's native email address. It also allows you to use the device's GPS capabilities. So if you find address on any one of the Cisco applications, you can choose to get directions or even show a map. We've taken it a little further to allow you to actually use these devices in the warehouse to do scanning. What we're doing now is we're even taking Espresso into the warehouse. I have a scanner hooked up to my iPhone right now. It's a scanner like this, and you can literally just go scan, 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 scan. I also have another one which is, it, it works off Bluetooth, can work on your iPad as well, and I'll show you a demonstration of that. 
So it's Bluetooth straight onto these devices and we can just scan on them. We can pretty much scan anything. We can do QR codes, we can do PDF codes, we can do normal barcodes. It's, it's completely up to you. I think the key to our success also is our central administration. It, it comes down to this bring your own device phenomenon where companies and administrators are sort of raising the red flag in terms of, I don't want that particular user to see this information. What happens if this user leaves the organization? That device is his. How do I get that information off his device? Well, what we have is a central administration where an administrator can go into this administration pane uh, deny this particular user access to various different applications. What he can also do is say, you know, John's got a promotion this year. And instead of him being in the sales cycle, he's now in the production cycle. So all I have to do as an administrator is go into the menu structure and say, John, you now belong to production. And the next time John logs into Cisper Espresso, all the production applications will now surface itself in Espresso. We all so know that mobile devices are moving devices. They get lost, they get stolen. So do you have to go into these uh, applications or these devices and re-customize them? Not at all. And as soon as the user gets a new device, all his information is simply synced back as it was before. We've spent a lot of time in terms of data transfer. We've spent an enormous time on making sure that we sent the minimal amount of data. Because data is expensive in most cases, in most countries. So when we're sending down information, we don't send tons and tons of information. We just send the bare minimum. We're using new protocols like JSON, JavaScript object notation, that just sends the tag and a value, a tag and a value. When we're returning back invoices, we don't send all 10,000 invoices. We'll page them 25 at a time on the server for you. Data is only fetched when you view it. So some of the components allow you to link to another page to view the invoices. And if you view the customer, it doesn't mean we're going to bring down all the invoices. We only bring down the invoices when you say bring down the invoices. Okay. And lastly, encryption. Well, it's up to you. It all runs off a web server. So if you wanted to, you could turn on SSL and use a, secure <coughs> a certificate. It's completely up to you. So we leave that in your hands on how you want data encryption.